Today, sisters, today is your day. I tell you that right now. It has built up long enough. We've been silent here, but uh, it doesn't hit the fan, basically. Um, so today's class is going to be called, make sure you write this title down. Make sure, make sure you got your notes out. Brothers, make sure you got yours out, too. Uh, today's title is called A Wicked Woman Named Jezebel McCall Vashti. That's her name. Jezebel McCall Vashti. First, middle, and last. I'm going to repeat it for you one more time. Put, put the thumbnail up. A wicked woman named Jezebel McCall Vashti. All right. Opening statement of today's class here. Uh, black and brown, I'm going to start saying that, because Northern Kingdom, they understand when you say brown, exclude the stuff, be like it's just Southern Kingdom, but no, it's, uh, no, you can't, I haven't done it, make sure you post it in the sisters group too, and pin it. Um, black and brown women, until this day, haven't admitted they are the reason black men die. Yep. Even unto this day, black and brown women haven't admitted they are the reason that black men die. Here's the proof. Sirach chapter 25. You know, we, we, we back everything up with scriptures. We just don't throw stuff out there. We try and pile stuff on, make you feel bad about yourself. All of us, thus saith the Lord. Sirach 25, 24. Here's the proof. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Read it again. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, uh -huh. and through her we all die. You are the reason that black men die. And it's about time that you admit to it so you can come up out your wickedness. Here's some more proof of it. Uh, give me that in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Because... This is what uh, Jezebel McCall Vashti is thinking right now. Uh-uh. What about Adam? The man is the head of the household when it comes to messing up. Other than that, it's 80-20, 70-30, 50-50. But when it's time to pass the blame, you the head of the household. Oh. Read it. 1 Timothy 2, 13, 14. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13. For Adam was first formed, uh -huh. then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Through her we all die. And she convinced her husband to go against God. That sounds familiar, don't it? Go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Let's read about it. The 
book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 15. And the reason why we got to go over this is because the, the during this whole quarantine life, it now, now I got a new understanding of the weaker vessel. Through this whole thing where, where you know, the, se the security blanket of where, you know, most brothers, you can bring your, your wife in here and get a, you know, chin checked with the scriptures if she, she's acting like the devil and all that. You know, you, you, it's been up and down throughout this whole thing, so you can't really do that. So now the, the true nature of them is coming out. You got sisters that are, are leaving their husbands, sleeping with NFL players. Uh, y you got sisters that got old n they boyfriends, old boyfriend's number in their phone, and they married, sleeping with them. You got sisters that uh, a man go to work, come home, and all the shit is gone. Everything. The bed, the damn toilet paper's gone. The light bulbs, everything. The, the furniture, all of it, gone. You got sisters, brothers in the world, Brothers in the world, letting them bang you out all night, shooting off in you. Go ahead, Cam. And remember, it, the Lord is a genius. He let it simmer. We all came in. We said yes. We all said yes to the commandments of the Lord. We said yes to our nationality. But then when it came for crunch time, the pressure came. He let it simmer with, uh, what do you call it, uh, the quarantine. Mm -hmm. Everybody was put to the test. Sisters was put to the test. Brothers, patience, put to the test. Then what happened? Folded under fornication. Folded under adultery. Yeah, Kat, we, we brought that out earlier. When, when tribulation comes, you know, we, we, they crumble. Right. They crumble. That means, that means, you understand, that means they truly weren't here from the jump. Yeah, and, and I, I don't, I don't want to forget. I don't, I don't want to forget. Everyone give a shout out to the sisters that want to divorce their husbands. Okay don't want to forget about you or, or the ones that want to know more about the separation process yeah don't forget about those, them those are the ones you can't big shout out you in there too genesis chapter 2 turn let's read verse 15 through 17 genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 and the lord god took the man and put him into the garden of eden to dress it and to keep it and the lord god commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. So God gave the instructions of how he wanted the entire earth to run. He gave it to, a, at this time, a righteous black man. These are the instructions to run the entire earth. Don't do this, that, and the other. But what happened? Read verse 18. Verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. And God in his infinite wisdom said, This man needs somebody with him in this walk, in this thing called life. He needs somebody with him. What did he call him? Read. I will make him and help me. Make him a what? And help me. Get the for definition. Him. Get the definition of help. And I want to read definition number one. Because I got all the stuff posted. I, I, I was up to, I was up pretty late. <laughs> Just say that. Meditating on this. And this has been brewing for, for a while. Captain Severus would say, please. Do the class this week. And I said, no, no. I'm going to wait till the sisters come back. Since Atlanta. Since Atlanta. I said, no, I'm going to wait till they come back because I want to see them. I, I want to look, look at them. Um, pull it up. Pull up help. All of us in the, in the group. Y'all should have all this stuff lined up already. Uh, read definition number one. Help. To give assistance or support to. To give assistance or support to. Two, that is the reason he created a woman after the man, not at the same time. Right. The Lord didn't make him at the same time to say, I want y'all both to, to have uh, equal power on this earth. 
I want it to be 50-50. You know, y'all got to decide on some things and discuss things, you know. If he see, you know, y'all got to talk it out. And only if you agree with it, if he should run the earth this way, then you consent to it. He didn't do that. Gave Adam, the a righteous black man, all the instructions he needed first. And then he decided to make you to do what? Go, go, go back to it. To do what? Read it. To give assistance or support. To, to. support. Talk about it all the time. Support the troops, right? Oh, some of you brothers know y'all ain't got no damn support except for y'all brothers. Read number two. Definition number two. To make more pleasant or bearable. To make more pleasant or bearable. I hope y'all writing these down. These are short definitions of the word help. What God made you to be. He created you to be a help me and then gave you the title of a one man because you came from man. But your, your, your absolute divine purpose is to be a help meet to the man, not to yourself. Now, go back to it. I want to show something. Why would God have to, why would he create somebody for the man to make things bearable? Why? No, no, no. You ain't got to raise your hand. I already, I done, I done taught this class in my head already. Why would he make it bearable? Give me that um, article. This is for the sisters out there that think it, that, that say to themselves in their mind, I got it just as hard as you do. No, the hell you don't, women. Pull it up. Read that form. Black men face high discrimination and depression, even as their education and incomes rise. It don't matter how much money you got as a black man. Still face discrimination. And with that comes depression. Women think they're the only ones that suffer from depression. No, we do too. Because we know who in the hell we're supposed to be on this earth, and we can't fulfill the role entirely. We're supposed to rule the whole earth. But because the woman deceived us and we listen, now we all die and suffer. Be glad when you women admit that. Go back to the article. Scroll down. July 21st. This study just came out. So let's read that first paragraph. Are you a highly educated and relatively wealthy black man in the U.S.? Studies that we have done and also those by others show that you are at increased risk of discrimination and depression. Our research on the intersection of race and gender in the U.S. shows that while education and income reduce the risk of discrimination and depression for whites and black women, this is not so for black men. Mm -hmm. This underscores other research we have done that suggests black men are especially singled out as dangerous, threatening, and inferior. So, so you see the, the, the stigma that we got? Go back up to it. Dangerous, threatening, and inferior. That, that's, what, that's how all the nations see us. That, that is, that's the invisible marker that black men walk around with. Go down. I want to go straight to where I want to go straight to. Oh, man. Uh, hold that. We're going to come back to it. Um, give me Genesis 25, 21. We're coming back to that article, right? The Lord made a helper to make things bearable in this evil world where all the odds are stacked against us. And it's been that way since the beginning. Genesis 25, read verse 21, 22. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? That struggle is not fighting for position, for room in the belly. That struggle is... is is uh, Esau trying to kill us, trying to take our life. Finish verse 22. And she went to inquire of the Lord. 
Is that it? Yes, sir. On verse 22? Yes, sir. So the white man been trying to kill us since the womb, since the belly. Before we even came out, black man been fighting for their life. You got to make it through abortion. Then you got to fight the white man when you get out here. And it ain't just it ain't just a white man. Because I want to think I'm on some racist rant. You know the people that watch the videos, oh, this is a hit against the white man. No, no. Other nations been trying to kill us too from the jump. Go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 1. Read verse 15, 16. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other, Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, uh -huh. if it be a son, if it be a daughter, if it be a son, if it be a woman, a son, uh -huh. then ye shall kill him. They've been trying to kill us from the jump. And kept not just that. Who were they using to kill us? The woman. Oh man. The women. You cold blooded. I didn't even think about this. Here's Same way see. Satan was trying to use the woman to bring us down. Again, you see history repeating itself again. Likewise, thus today. Read it again. Verse 16. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women. And see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. Uh huh. But when it pertains to the women, read. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. So all you women, you, you uh, Jezebel McCall Vashti, that in your mind, we got it just as hard as I work just as hard as you. No, the hell you don't. When it comes to surviving in America, you don't have the same kind of struggles we do. You ain't fighting for your life every time you go out. Half y'all ain't even, y'all don't even worry about the cops when y'all go out. I guarantee right now, these black men right here, every time a police come around us, even if we ain't got no tickets, seatbelt on. We don't even want to go, uh, the speed limit is 40, we, and we at 42, we start slowing down. Cop pull up behind us, we pray he ain't running the tag. Just to pull us over for whatever. You don't worry about that. Here, go back to the article. Here's the proof. Go down to um, study six on the article. So we read the first paragraph about story, click story continues, yeah, about how they, they see us. Now read study six done by uh, professors. Read that. Study six. Our final research was studying implicit bias or when people without their conscious knowledge hold stereotypes about others. Without, uh, without conscious knowledge, right? So this is built into a program to look at us this way. Go ahead. Our study applied data of the Implicit Association Test, IAT, which measures how our brain struggles to match black faces with positive terms. Read that again. Our brain struggles to match black faces with positive terms. Term. That's how you see, that's why you, you see young teenage black kids and black and brown kids getting killed. They just can't see no positivity in the, in the young black and brown man. They can't see it. They it does not compute. <sighs> Kill him. Go back to it. Of nearly 450,000 individuals. How many? 450,000 individuals. That they could find. <laughs> Go ahead. We found that white men hold higher implicit bias against black people. Who do? White men hold higher implicit bias against black people than white women do. They love, because you know they love the black man. They love the dark chocolate. Go ahead. This Although you got, you, got, you got some of them, you got some of them um, um, Sheeta mites that outright hate, hate us too. Go ahead. This is troubling because white men have the highest level of political power and make up the majority of police, judges, lawyers, and people who make hiring and promotion decisions. White men are also... Oh, oh, hold on. This is for all you sisters that complain about your husband not making enough money. Always got a damn attitude about money. 
You see what the uphill battle we facing. Even if we do get education, it don't matter. You see what the article said at the very top. Even if you are rich in America as a black man, you're going to face discrimination and racism. Go back to it. White men are also most likely to be the ones who write the rules and the laws. To lock people up, stop and frisk. Prison, uh, what's it, school to prison pipeline. Go ahead. Implicit bias is still bias, and it too could be a factor in black men's depression. Go down to uh, black men singled out. Yeah, right there. Black men singled out. Many other studies show similar findings. Black men are disproportionately shot and killed by police more than black women. Black men are stopped, arrested, jailed more, and significantly overrepresented in U.S. prisons. This is stats. This ain't just, this ain't made up right here, y'all. So you black women and brown women can understand the life of the man you disrespect. Go ahead. Black men are six times more likely than white men to spend time in prison. This increased risk for black men is highest when they are tall and large. When they what? Are tall and large. When I was in college, the, um, the description of a criminal was tall, muscular, with long arms. Who the hell is that on the face of the earth? But say they just des described you. Just, but say ain't gonna bust a grape unless you, you mess with him. Because he got the spirit of the Lord in him. But I know he's crazy because he's Levi. <laughs> but go back to it. This is this is this is who they see as a threat. Tall and large. Read the next paragraph. One study deserves particular attention. The famous gender matters too. So it ain't just cause you're black. It depends on what gender you are. They did they even did statistics on that. That's why they said what the scriptures say, the, the the thoughts of every one of them is deep. We go back to it. It shows black boys and girls in eighth and eleventh grades differed in their perception of peer and classroom discrimination. So this is look, this is even at this age saying that they don't see it the same. They don't see this world the same, is what it's saying. Go ahead. For boys, discrimination harmed their grades, attitudes, and their regard for the importance of school. So that's why you hear leadership always saying, if you can, let's get to this homeschooling, let's start this thing up. Because your your black and brown boys in school faced un uh, was it unconscious bias where they being discriminated against and the person that's discriminating against them don't even know it. This is just how they are programmed to react to black and brown men because they tall, they large, they a threat. I gotta treat them different. Re uh, off top, read on. For girls, however, the effects generally had a positive impact. Keep reading. In other words, race alone may not be the issue here. Instead, it is an issue of race and gender that may stem from hopelessness, inequality, and blocked opportunities. Together, these studies provide a disturbing picture of the challenges that black males face, and they show the burden that black men bear when some whites wonder, what's the big deal? Racism was 150 years ago. And, and a lot of our, our women... Uh, in, in our nation got that same mentality right there. What's the big idea? Why can't you get ahead? What's wrong? Look at all these opportunities you got around us. Not understanding the uh, uh, underlying factors that we face when we do go after those opportunities. And, and, and we got a damn brain just like you do where if you keep going after opportunity after opportunity and it don't work out, you get turned down, turned down, turned down, then that causes other things to, to pop up in your mind and in your spirit. Like you said, depression. What ended 150 years ago was slavery, not racism. That was a heavy quote right there. A lot of people don't understand that. Slavery ended 150 years ago. Hard, hard bondage slavery did, because we still in slavery, but not racism. Read on. And our research suggests that black men experience this racism in distinct ways. Many of the racist ideas white Americans have of black people are driven by the negative stereotypes white Americans have of black men, 
being more violent, sexually promiscuous, and dangerous than other race slash sex groups. Mm -hmm. This dynamic is so strong that even hearing the names of black men Dang. could lead to a fight or flight response in white males. Hearing the name. Frito. A recent study found that even armed black and white women. L listen to this right here. This tripped me out when I read this. Read that. Were less threatening than unarmed black males to white Americans. Now you see why we get killed. A black woman, what does it say? Black and white women were less threatening than an unarmed black male. Oh, armed. Oh, yeah. Then un unarmed black males to white Americans. Read that next part. The reality of racism in the U.S. makes black males peculiarly targeted by lethal violence, police homicide, and economic downward mobility. Downward mobility. We, it's, we trying to get ahead. It ain't like we ain't trying to. That's like a you boxed in a corner. You basically boxed in a the corner. They they map out your uh, oppression until to the point where you just explode in anger and violence. All right, and most likely what happens that violence is aimed at your own people because you begin to blame your people for keeping you down. That's what they do, and e even in the music you hear it. All right, get rich or die trying. I'm not gonna let the next end get me uh, keep me down. So that's what happened. That's exactly what you see. A map of our oppression. Hey, Kat, I still can't go over. Uh, go up above again. Read that again. With the woman. It's a, a, a recent study. Read that again. A, ah. recent, yeah, a right. recent study found that even armed black and white women. Stop there. It says armed. Black and white women. Y'all got to put it in my arm. Meaning they have weapons on them. Right. Weapons that could put somebody to death. AK-47 AK in her 47 hand. Oh, we ain't worried about hand. her. Get the nigga with no gun. With no gun. That's walking around that got long arms and tall. Just walking. Get he got a tuxedo and everything. Kill him. I, I, I just, I'm just still thinking about how an armed black and white woman, it's not dangerous. But a man just walking down the street, tall and black is more dangerous. That's heavy. That's heavy, man. Hey. The life we live. Yeah. Go back to it. Uh, read that last paragraph again. Go back up. Go up some. Uh, and according to our studies. And no, no. Go, go back up. Go back up a little bit more. Read that. The reality. The reality of racism in the U.S. makes black males peculiarly targeted by lethal violence, police homicide, and economic downward mobility. And according to our studies, regardless of their economic success and personal ambitions, Black males are still perceived as more threatening and dangerous than their female counterparts. You see that right now playing out in the entertainment industry. More threatening. The black males, we got to castrate them in front of everybody. Um, go to, let me see, go back to that article. There might be something on that. Scroll down. Oh, yeah, I want black men's issues overlooked, too. I want that. Black the, the, Just the first two paragraphs. Black men's issues overlooked. Unfortunately for us all, it has primarily been the dead black male body that drives our understandings of racism against black men and boys in the United States. So we got to die for them to understand that, uh, you know, racism is real. That we fighting uphill battles. Uh, we fighting for our life. That's when they understand it. Read on. Yet racism stalks black men every day of their lives. Read it again. Yet racism stalks black men every day of their lives, dehumanizing them, decreasing their quality of life, and even shortening their lives. Even doing what? Shortening their lives. Don't the scriptures say that, that depression will kill you? Yeah. Yeah. Sorrow of mind is what God called it. He said it will kill you. Go back up to it. Go ahead, Kat. It says, yet racism stalk, put it back up. Racism stalk black men every day of their lives. That means where you at Starbucks, oh, you yeah. gonna, oh, it's coming for you. Oh, yeah. Where you at Walmart, it's coming for you. In your parking lot, in front of your home. In your home, Cap. Oh, even in your home. In there your was home. a video like back. that. The brother was in his home, and the alarm went off. Police kicked open the door and arrested him in his house. Yeah. So oh, it's stalking yeah, you. That. Remember that? Yeah. 
And he was he was in his uh boxes, underwear, underwears, box. family upstairs. And they came and kicked open the door. Stalks you every day How of your life. How do you arrest a, ma a man in his drawers yeah. standing yeah. in the doorway? You cut and, and look at this. He said, "I live here. Give him the address and everything." And you know what they do? They are oh, we gonna put you in handcuffs for our safety? The dudes in draws. <laughs> hey, kept knowing that. You know, in your house, you got pictures of yourself all over. Man, dude, I live here. Look, I just happen to carry photos in my pocket. But for our safety, yeah, we gotta, <laughs> gotta arrest him. Hey, Dave Chappelle did a skit like that. He said, um, he was his New York apartment was robbed. And he said, um, but I didn't call the cops because my house looked too nice. Yeah. Yeah. He said, um, he said, because if I call the cops, they're going to kick in the door and say, oh, the, 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 the culprit is still here. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, he put up pictures all over the place of himself. So, you know, they, they do look at us unfair, even when we're innocent. Yeah. Go back to it. Let's read that. Um Racism stalks. Go ahead. Yet racism stalks black men every day of their lives, dehumanizing them, decreasing their quality of life, and even shortening their lives. Black men live, on average, four fewer years than white men. Damn. Mm, mm, mm. Life is short. Read it. Efforts to escape racism's effects, such as gaining education and earning more money, force them to question their own worth. You gotta question your own identity. You gotta assimilate. When you assimilate, you don't feel, you, you know, you, be, you don't feel black for real. And then you come out into the world where your own black people, why you talk like that? You got this, you got that, you ain't one of us. So we catch it on both sides. And then you go home and catch it even more. Go back to the definition of help. I want you to understand this, sisters. You are called a woman, but your order from God is to be a help meet. That's what he created you for. Go back to the definition, and let's read 2A. Definition of help, 2A. To make more pleasant or bearable. Your job is to make this captivity that we are in, the racism we face on the streets, the, the uh, inferior looks we got, the um, the uh, jailing from the police, all of that, your job is to make it just a little bit more bearable. Because it ain't going nowhere. They're going to change. We under the curses until Christ come back. I'm sorry, Cap. Put that definition up again one more time, please. Make it more pleasant or bearable. You understand these men, the, the wisdom that they have to use in the midst of this uh, world, they have to even being called nigger. They have to, more, you know, subdue being, yeah, you know, yeah. use patience, use wisdom in their reply. Yeah. Even be after being called boy at the job, yeah. hey, you come do this, you know, snapping the fingers by the uh, uh, by the boss man. They gotta subdue. They gotta humble themselves down. So that takes a lot of wisdom and patience uh, uh, on the part of these men when they out in the world. Yeah. Even getting pulled over. They know this man has the power to take his life. Yes, sir. Here, here you go. Anything you want. Here, here's my whole wallet. Matter of fact, here's the keys outside the window. Don't move too fast. The, I'm nice and slow. That's it. That takes a lot of patience and wisdom for that man to do that, to navigate in this wicked world. That's set up to take his life and imprison him. Take him out of the family. Hey, but so, you know, as, what, what I think the disconnect is is, as men, we navigate this world, we understand what is out there, and we deal with it. We, we deal with that, um, that stress and that chaos that's out there. Because we know, as when you're a man, you know the responsibilities you have, especially when you're a guy in a house. But what, what the dagger that really strikes that man's heart is when he comes home to that person that is supposed to be what, what, what does the, the definition say? Bearable. Make it bearable, and that woman then strikes that dagger in that man's heart. Deeper. And, and says, you are really a nigger. Yep. What do you mean give you something to eat? What do you mean do this? What do you mean do this for you? Where's the respect that is that you're expecting 
from the the thing that was created for you is not there. That Dang. is that is the real hurt. To know that you are, you you mean nothing to the person. You can take you can take all the the ridicule for for the things that is out there in the world that means nothing to you. But when you come home and that person that is created for you says, "Nah, I'm going to make it official. You are nothing." Lord, have mercy. Whoa. Damn, that hurt me. <laughs> uh, go back to the definition. Today's class, for you that's coming in, a wicked woman named Jezebel McCall Vashti. No, go back, go back, go back. I ain't ready for none of that. Uh, the definition, there we go. Go go down. Well, it's at the end of that it says improve, yeah, right. relieve. I can go into a whole thing about that really. We know how man relieves themselves. It's an uphill battle half the damn time for that. <laughs> Life on the line, about to die. Damn this, you know, got a got crazy look from Esau out there. We just want some relief, and you just don't want to get that. You know, man, I don't feel like it's relief. Can we do it later? Then go sleep on you. Oh. <laughs> go back to it. Go to definition three. Three, eight. 3A. A, B. Read 3A first. To be of use to. Benefit. To be of use to. That's what it means for help. To be of use to. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm going on. Read B. B. To further the advancement of. Stop right there. God said that I'm going to make somebody for him that is a help me, and that means that you are to help further the advancement of whatever endeavor your husband chooses to take part in in his life. No matter what it is, you don't get a say-so in it. If he's going this way, you better grab his damn belt and follow behind him. To further the advancement of. Hey, hey Kev, yeah. just in case some of you, you know, sisters didn't go, go back. Just in case they didn't understand the high, you know, the big words. Read underneath of A. Just in case that they couldn't understand oh, B. Oh, damn, I ain't even paid Read underneath A. What it says, will. Will do anything to help their cause. Damn. There you go. It's easy understood. It's real easy. If you didn't understand B, look at A. It, it's real easy to understand them words. It says, go back to it. Read it again. We'll do anything. We'll do. Yes, sisters, those words are together. <laughs> do, do anything. Yes. Most I put that there for a reason. He made those words to go together. Read it again. We'll do anything to help. No, to destroy. To help. To tear everything down. To help. No, to do what the hell my mind said. To mm. help. To help who? Their cause. Your husband's cause. Help his cause, not your cause. It's his cause. Whatever the hell he say, it goes. That's it. There's no, maybe I should it. Maybe, you know, let me have a second thought on this. For what? It was already been said. It's already been shown. Just do it. That's you, it. you know what it is, too? Because yeah, a lot of yeah. sisters think, uh, let me cuss this man out, and it's during his lowest state. Maybe that'll motivate him. Mm. That's not scriptural, y'all. Yeah. No, no, no. no way calling this man a, a, a what? A nigga, nigga. A punk. Yeah. That's not motivation. Good for nothing. You ain't doing this. You ain't doing nothing for me. That's not motivation. The scriptures show you exactly how to speak to that man. Go to uh, Proverbs 31. Here we go. And it'd be a lot of sisters, too, who'll be on the Proverbs 31 movement, and they don't do it. Mm, don't Come know, on. I don't know about hey, that. Hey. Yeah, I'm telling you, nah, I'm Proverbs that, that, but nah. they won't do it. All right. Get that, uh, 3126. I got one. You got one, too? Go ahead. Proverbs 3126. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 26. Uh-huh. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. With what? With wisdom. With what? With wisdom. She knows how to speak to that man. She know when to speak to the man. She know how to build him up. Read. 
And in her tongue mm -hmm. is the law of kindness. So you see that? That wisdom is backed up with kindness. So that man, he lost his job for temporarily, or he's not doing what he's supposed to do at that moment. Mm -hmm. The Lord tell you how to speak to him. He said, on your lips should be wisdom, and it should be coupled with kindness. So okay. a wicked woman, it, it, if you happen to have some of these traits, you know, we bring it out, that you don't match up with a help me, you ain't nothing but a ball and chain to your husband in this truth. That's all you are. Because you're not helping further the advancement. I'm telling you right now, since a brother's precepts don't fly off the top of his head when he's stressed out. They don't. It just don't happen. Go to Genesis 3.16. When you go to, you stressed out from what's happening in your own house and go to camp, all you want to do is blast. But our job is not to do that. It's to build up to our people. Build up our people is what, it's, or what we're supposed to do, but we can't do that half the time. Genesis 3.16, real quick. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. So your desire in this earth should be to help your husband. Uh, what was that? Go back to the definition. Go back to that. Help your desire is to help the advancement of your husband in this life. That should be when you wake up, when you go to sleep, how can I help further him in his endeavors in life? And the number one goal uh, for every brother in here is to bring the kingdom of God because all that racism and all them studies they done done on us, that ain't going nowhere until the kingdom come. So your job should be, your desire is to help him in his advancement in life no matter what it is. Like you said, officer, we'll do anything to help him be better at bringing the kingdom. Go to Proverbs 14 and 1. This is what, this is what wicked women do right here. Let me speed up. Proverbs 14 and 1. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. So a, a wise woman, you build it by fulfilling your role as the help meet. But a, but a, a, a foolish woman, a wicked woman, will pluck it down by you. Let me make sure I read because I wrote down a lot of stuff. Uh, you pluck it down by always starting an argument. If you don't argue, because you might not be able to argue, you upset and contentious. Giving your husband the stank nasty eye, the stank nasty attitude. You looking for something to complain about, or you don't do things around the house after he asks you to do it. He leave, come back, and the stuff's still the same. You ain't moved. Read it again. This is how you tear down the house. Go ahead. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. So, so also going into that. I got here, you, the wicked woman, you're not happy to see your husband happy without you being the cause of it. If he's not the cause, if you didn't make him happy, well, what the hell? I call, that's, that, that's you McCall sisters. That's uh, who you are. Th that's that, uh, oh, so, so you only happy when you were the brother. Oh. Oh, yeah. why, why, why you, why you got to go to the school? And, and, why you got to go to camp? Um, um, a, a lot of that stuff, too, that you mentioned earlier is not just um, calling names or the murmuring, the complaining verbally. It's um, the, eye, the, uh, the facial gestures. Yeah, that's what I said. It's the stink, the stink, yeah, nasty the, the eye. The rolling the of the eyes. Yeah. You know, is, I know that thing is, you'll find that that thing is prevalent in a lot, a lot of Israelite really has, marriages. Yeah. It's in there. Uh, when you, um, I mentioned something about even being, it said a wise woman buildeth up her house. And it said the scripture says the woman must submit to her husband. But true submission is not when you husbands are constantly in affirming things to be done. Like, yes, you can do this. Yes, it's okay. That submission that you can truly know is being, that's in effect, is when you say no. Yep. No, we're not doing that. Damn. And then you look 
the 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 true sense of submission is when you s just try it. just say just say no for saying no and look at the face. Beautiful. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Now, and all you get this, you might get it. Okay. All right. All right. Whatever. Whatever you say, Lord. Or you have children, and it says, "All right, well, your 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 father say mm -hmm. not to do it. It's not. It's not. We we agree that you're not going to do that." But the, the the cut down your your authority. your uh, your authority. Nah, your father say you can't do it. So that that Proverbs thirty one movement is something that sisters actually use for them to glorify themselves. Because when you read verse ten, they say, "For you know, a Proverbs thirty one woman is more precious than ruby." So now she brings that to the husband. You know, I'm more, I'm precious. Mm -hmm. I'm Proverbs 31. I'm, I'm more precious than you. You should appreciate me. But in other words, that woman is not honoring her husband. Hey, let's get that for the uh, McCall sisters because they, they thought I made that up. That, you know, unless you the cause of the happiness, you know. Go, go to it. Go to 2 Samuel 6 and 12. If it ain't me making you happy, I can't be happy for you. 2 Samuel 6 and 12. What I want. Yep, let's read 12 through 16. 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 12. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom into the city of David with gladness. With what? With gladness. So David was happy on behalf of the Lord. What he had done for Israel. David is happy. He's joyful right now. Read on. And it was so that when they had bared the ark of the Lord, had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. Mm -hmm. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. Uh -huh. Now, this is, this is after everybody's happy for the deliverance. The blessing of the Lord has came down in the ark of God. We all know how important the ark of God is to Israel. It's so important, he said, that nobody will find it until I restore Israel back to their glory. That's how important it is. Right? So let's see how the McCall sister feels about David's happiness when it didn't involve her. Read on. McCall. Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. Now, the look wasn't, it wasn't the look of joyful and glee. She wasn't up her smiling. Look what my husband done did for the Lord. All praises to the Most High God of Israel. That wasn't the look she was giving out that, out that window. Read. Read the next part. And she despised him in her heart. Why is that nigga happy? Who 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 made him? Who, oh, he out there. You know what he he out there talking to the maidens. See, every time you leave the house, I know you out there doing something evil. <laughs> so they was the one that made you happy, huh? Mm hmm. Read it again. Read verse sixteen. Verse sixteen. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. A lot of you sisters hate that your, your husband is advancing in this truth. A lot of you hate it. You, you was fine when he was a brother because he'd go home every day. He didn't really do nothing. He might be an MOV. He'd go out once a month when he fast. But now he become a soldier. He got to go to camp. He got 365. He 30 days. He gone every day. He become a 10. Now he got to do calls with brothers. He a 29, he got to do things around the school. He got to might have to open up. He's over, he's over top of this, he's over that. He become a 50. Now he's up here having meetings all the time with the captains and stuff right there. Oh, he become an 80. Well, he got a whole lot of responsibility on his hand. We ain't here. Uh, Officer Abaddon, you run the school. Become a captain. Now you got you over uh, two, uh, schools with hundreds of people in them. You on the computer all the time. You on your telegram all the time. You don't listen to me when I start talking to you. A lot of y'all, a lot of sisters, you be happy when he's a brother. So you only want him to be a soldier so you can meet the qualifications of leadership to say, oh, he is doing work of the Lord. 
So, so also, Kat, to, to make it more real to you brothers, this is how you know. When you read the last part of verse 16, it says what? And she despised him in her heart. So to know when someone despises you in your heart, this is how it really goes down in schools. You're in here, and all of a sudden, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Or they're sitting in a corner. Looking, waiting on you. Not talking to anybody. All of a sudden, they're studying. Yep. I'm going to go through these scriptures, too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a Everybody precept. Come back here. What's going on with you? I'll just wait on my husband. I'm just, I just, I'm just finding a precept to cut him and then get home. Yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, you know what? They, they leave out of here, and they go and they sit in their car. That's the... Oh! That, that's the signal. Oh! oh! That's the signal for you, nigga, I'm ready. I'm ready. But I'm ju- I just don't want to show show my true spirit. In there. In there. But you what, know, I've, you know in the, the house, I already told you, this is the signal. So th- these these are real things. I know we joking, but. I ain't joking. I know what I mean, but. I mean, Brothers they're, they're, laughing because they know laughing, it's true. This is. <laughs> this is the one that is, this is the person that the Lord says supposed to be the one that, uh, what is definition say again? Uh, um, make, make it this bearable. bearable in the truth. More because pleasant. More pleasant because there is a lot of work to be done. A lot of work, a lot of pressure, not only getting the work done, dealing with the, the heathens, then to get it from the one that is supposed to be there for you. She says, now, nah, it's time to go. N- nothing's worse than a sister that's sitting over here and, and got the stank face and be like, I'm ready to go. After your husband done worked all week, he done went out on the streets and battled with all these spirits that our people got on him. And then he comes back, and this is his joy, his gladness from all the hard work he done all week and dealing with wicked people on the streets, being amongst the brothers, listening to music, having a few drinks. This is his gladness. It's nothing worse to look over, and your wife is like this. I think, I think I'm going to shut up, man. Nothing worse than that. You destroy a man's spirit. All right, all right hey, y'all, I got to go. You look over. All right, I got to go. I catch y'all next seven. Oh, man. Go to verse 20. Here's something else about you, McCall sisters. Verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household, and McCall, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. He came in to bless the house. <laughs> go ahead. And said, how glorious. Day covered himself today in the eyes of the hand of his servants uh-huh. as one of the fellows asleep on especially those in authority. Right. Who was David at this time, brothers? He was what? And she got enough damn nerve to to disrespect him in his own house. And he's the king of Israel that God set up. And she said, read it again. She came out to meet David. It wasn't, oh, I'm so happy. She had a smile on her face. It wasn't, I'm glad to see you. She came out to meet him to give him his her damn two cents. Because you, for some reason, you happy without me. What could it be? McCall sisters are disrespectful. Read it again. Then David returned to bless his household. Listen to how she's talking to the king of Israel, a man after God's own heart. She didn't give a damn that he was going hard for the Lord. After he came back from from war. Read it. Verse 20. And McCall, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. She compared him to one of the, the, the commoners on the street. You know how much disrespect and pride you got to be full of to do that to your husband who's the king? That means you don't even respect the title that the Lord gave him. I don't give a damn if you're an officer to him. I don't care if you're a soldier of the Lord. 
Don't mean nothing in this house when it comes to me. I'm going to disrespect you and talk to you how I want to. It's in the scriptures. That's you, Nicole, sisters. You out there. But it ain't you they hate. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8. Let's see who these McCall sisters' anger is really towards. Read it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 8. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not. Hold on, hold on. Didn't McCall dis despise David? The scripture said David right there, right? But in the spirit, who was it? Read. Despiseth not man, but God. You McCall sisters really hate God deep down. When you're bringing strife and disrespect and talking to your husband, and have you? He can't be happy unless it's the happiness come from you. You're always questioning why you why you got a smile on your face. You just so happy around the brothers. It ain't really him you you despise. You despise God. That's who you truly got a problem with at the end of the day, because it's God that called him in here. It's God that gave him his his position. That gave him his purpose. Go to the book. Go to the book, a book. I found I happened to be stumbling in my closet. And I happened to find a book in my wife's backpack. I said, what the hell is this? I came back out the closet. Where does this come from? You didn't tell me you was reading. I'm trying to see Hiding evidence. There's a few of you other sisters that got this book too. I ain't gonna put the title up. She said, don't highlight in it. I said, I'm going to read this book in a day. Go to it. And, go, and I want you to read where I got it, the little inscription. Read that real quick. Yeah, start from there and go down. The black woman is accustomed to speaking to and about the black man in a negative and disparaging tone. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. Read on. She may even speak to strange, unknown men in a more civil tone. When she go to work with a boss, she, she she don't never raise her voice to him. What do you need me to do? Need me to stay a little bit longer? You want me to do this? You want me to come in on my day off? Oh, um, can you talk to leadership for, for me? I can't be there on that day because white man told me I got to work on the Lord's day. Can you do that for me? You speak to them in a, in a tone. Your, your husband ain't never heard of. He see you at work, he's like, oh, you're a different woman right here. Damn. But I it never crossed our mind. I didn't know they wrote a book about my experience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard her say good morning to you? Not once. Mm -hmm. Go to work. Good morning, boss. Hey, buddy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You morning, wake morning, up. Morning, you morning. sleep with the person. <laughs> wake up. Damn, nigga. You get still up, here? Get up. Get up. Yeah. It's time to go to work. Get up. <laughs> get up. No good morning. No none of that. No, no kisses, no smooches, no nothing. Get up. Go to work. You're going to be late. I need your money. <laughs> read the harshness of her. Read it. Speed it up a little bit. The harshness of her tone of voice, the shrill grating impatience, her cadence and inflections speak loudly of her disrespect. She sometimes appears to glare at the black man as if she's on the brink of physically attacking him. That stank look. Go ahead. She interrupts his explanations with more badgering. And her disregard for his ideas is so ingrained in her psyche such as to be pathoscopic to her nature. When she is really angry with him, she will stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, mm. feet apart, hands on her hips as if daring him to say another word. Mm -mm -mm. She can fuss for hours, bickering, sneering, cursing, and competing to drive her point home with the highest extreme of emotionalism. Read on. She scroll, absolutely scroll down, so, scroll down for him. She yeah. absolutely demands to have the last word. Uh. Last word. Gotta have it. Read the next one. She not only uses the sounds of disrespect to her own man, but will use the same intonations when angry with any black man. Her son, her neighbors, her father. Her boss or co-workers, her brother or others, she can become so vicious sounding that sometimes it resembles a savage animal barking. Mm. Read on. In her anger, she will throw things, stamp her feet, slam doors, snatch herself around, and sometimes... Go to the next page. 
I don't think. Yeah. Go into neutral. Go into neutral is that when you. What's wrong? Nothing. That's that neutral. Nothing. Read on. Her non-acceptable ways of displaying her anger are deeply rooted in her suspicions. Whenever she catches the black man in what she deems as a wrongdoing, mm. she uses that opportunity to vent all of her current frustration. She harbors grudges. Oh, she does what? She harbors grudges. The black man may start out arguing with the black woman about one point, and in the middle of the fracas, she throws in a few other Oh, topics. all of us have faced that. That's that shovel right there. Yeah. That's that shovel. Well, in 1948, you did the X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You forgot? No, nah, it was just the other day. No, since you just said it was in 1948. Go back to it. The black man may start arguing with the black woman about one point, and in the middle of the fracas, she throws in a few other topics. And by the end of the argument, he may find himself debating an entirely different issue. Oh. She keeps a mental file on issues she's in disagreement with. Oh, yes, they do. Go ahead. She maintains about 90,000 kilobytes of negative information. Oh, yes, they do. And when she decides the right time, she springs them on her man. Show sure do. You don't know what the hell she's talking about. She got to remind you about what happened in the argument. You don't remember when you did this? You don't, you mean to tell me you don't remember that time that you did this, that, and the other. Go ahead, read on. The black woman is not known to practice respectful communication skills with the black man anyway. Read that again. The black woman is not known to practice respectful communication skills with the black man anyway. You know why she's, she, uh, what did it say? She's not known to do that because she didn't learn that from her mama. She learned how to disrespect her, a black man from her mama that disrespected her daddy. And it became normal in the house till it became a way of life of how you deal with men. Read on. She simply does not know how to talk to him. Oh, yes, she's a great conversationalist when discussing other subjects. But when trying to have a necessary one-on-one -on -one conversation with her man about a disagreement... Like McCall and David... A choice, an action of a fear, she has a completely complete breakdown of interpretation of the English language. She don't, she don't, it's just, you don't understand what I'm saying? No, you, you, you are you sitting here telling me you do not understand what I'm saying when I say I got to go to camp and bring out the word of the Lord. Why you got to do it today? You can't do it no other time. How many brothers they got there? How many brothers they got there? They got there, there. It's going to be other people to bring out the word. You ain't got to go today. Do you not understand that I got to go and fight for my people? It's just, you just don't understand it. It, don't, it does not compete. Speak at Fanny. She can't distinguish. She can't distinguish between a soft, comforting voice. Oh, read and, on. And scorn and contempt. Why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling. I'm not yelling. What are you talking about? Yes, you are. You yelling at me. Read on. She blows her top loud and wrong. If she would present her ideas calmly and unemotionally, the black man could deal with them. Yeah, yeah. And he does. But since she is so irrational about being right, she does not focus very well on one point. Mm. And her thoughts are scattered and unfocused because she is trying to argue about everything at once. Now read that next paragraph. If the, the black main, scroll up so you can see it, scroll up on that. Where are you at? Man? Pay attention back here. Or is, okay, yeah, go ahead. If the black woman does not learn how to respectfully talk to the black man, there is little chance she will ever really get to know him. Yes, message, sisters. Read. Nor of them ever coming together in harmony. A life full of turmoil. Proverbs nine thirteen. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. I need that book. I'll tell you after class. Proverbs 9 and 13. Read that. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. Is clamorous. Read on. She is simple 
and knoweth nothing. So if you full of art, because that clamorous is going into arguing. You full of you clamorous and you are full of argument, argumentative words. God call you simple and you don't know nothing. You don't see the big picture of why God called these men in here. Go to uh, Proverbs 21, 19. Full of argumentative words. Simple as hell. Read that. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 19. And this is what a man thinks in his in his mind. Read that. It is better to dwell in the wilderness. I'll go over a single brother's house, man. Been on the couch, sleep on the couch for a week. Read. Then with a contentious and an angry woman. Brother would rather find anywhere to go except be around you. Contentious, argumentative, angry woman. Surat 2520. We still on you, McCall, sisters. 2520, read that. Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 20. As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the aged, so is a wife full of words just, go ahead. to a quiet man. You're just a straight burden. That's all you are. You're a burden to a, to a man. That's what it is. Uh, it ain't, it's not easy for an old man to climb up a damn sandy hill. So in comparison, he's just a straight bird into him, full of words. And it ain't words full of wisdom. Go to Sirach 26, 14. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 14. Just full, of, full of words. You just make it you hard to live with in this captivity. To a quiet man, you just, it's, you're hard to live with, hard to deal with. Read that. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. This is what every man wants. A silent and loving woman. Because a wicked woman said, oh, oh, you want, you want to try to call us out on our stuff? Oh, I can be quiet then. Oh, I'll be quiet. And now, you just, you don't, you got no conversation. You ain't talk, you ain't talk. He asked you a question. I'm trying to be silent like the Lord said to do. No, it got to be silent and loving. Uh, do I got time for this? No, I don't. I, don't. I ain't got time. I got a lot more. To go no, I got more. Uh, I, I just want to say Eve is the first closet feminist. That's all I'm going to say. Marinate on it. Read Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Uh, now let's see. Go to Esther chapter 1. Esther chapter 1. I'm going to talk a little bit about you Vashti sisters. I don't know who Vashti is. We're going to acquaint you to her right now. Read that. Esther chapter 1. Let's read 1 through 3 real quick. That was a good scripture. Yeah, read that one real quick. Esther chapter 1 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus, which reigned. Uh, hold on. Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus. Brother. Go ahead. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. There you go. This is Ahasur Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over in 107 and 20 provinces. Mm -hmm. Then in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace. That's East India. Go ahead. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Medea, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. So he's in his house. Don't forget that, y'all. The king is in his house. Jump up to verse, teen, verse 9. Read 9. Verse 9. Also, Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. Hold on, who did that house belong to? Which belonged to King Ahasuerus. So she made a feast too. It belonged to King because because God is 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 uh is God Christ man woman right. So he said he set it up that way. She's having a feast in the house too. You did one for you. I'm gonna do one for me, right? Read verse ten. Verse ten. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman. Bista, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagtha, 
Zathar and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. Uh -huh. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment uh -huh. by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth. And his anger burned in him. You Vashti sisters hate to be in subjection to your husband. That's what that is right there. Remember, whose house is she in right now, brothers? The king's house. She's in the king's house that the Lord set up for him to rule over 127 prophets. Because everything comes from the Lord. And she said, no, I don't give a damn if you is the king over 127 provinces. I'm going to do what I want to do. Come here so I can show how beautiful you are to everybody. I don't even feel like it right now. Refuse to. You, you bash your sisters hate to be in subjection to your own husband. Um, Go ahead, real quick. Okay. So, um, pull up. This is, this is what bash these sisters. This is what you look like in the spirit when you refuse to be in subjection. Pull up the article. Pull it up for them. Yeah, this is you. This is you, Vashti sisters in the spirit. Read that. Read, read it. Read it. Read it. Woman smokes with Bible verse, asking wives to be submissive to their husbands. That's you, Vashti sisters in the spirit. Oh, yeah. Be in subjection in all things. You roll it up and smoke it in your spirit. Hey, pull that up one more time. So you see it took time. Look look at the, the cutting. Go, go down. Page. Scroll go down. down. Look at that. Right there. So they went ahead and cut it perfectly. Go look at that. Just to pull out out of the Bible, the holy book of our fathers. Look at this. And she cut it out to smoke it. You see it says, and zoom in on it so they can see it. Look at that, it. the weed right next to it. Zoom in on it. Scroll. What does that say? Wives and go. husbands. Wives, submit your husbands unto your uh, own, uh, submit unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Oh, we're going to go to, we're going to read the article. Scroll down. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Read that. A woman has sparked controversy online after she ripped off the part of the Bible asking wives to be submissive to their husbands and used it to smoke weed. Yeah, that's what y'all do in the spirit when, when, you, when you be defiant towards your husband. They tell you to do something. You roll it up and smoke it in your spirit. I don't give a damn what the Lord. And I hope you look and pay attention. Who is she trying to hurt by doing that? That means that man must be a God-fearing man, yeah. right? So that's a direct attack, not only to God, but also that man, that yeah. God-fearing man. Go back to it. Re read that real quick. The woman identified as priestess at Black Alien on Twitter. It ain't, And it's not fake, y'all. I went and looked it up. It's real. It's still on her page. So this ain't satire. Because we all, oh, that's satire news. No, nah, this is real. It's still there. She left it up. Read, read, read the, what she said behind it, the post to the picture. Read it. Shared a photo of the dried marijuana placed in the middle of an open Bible before she went on to share other photos where she had torn out a page, put the weed inside, and rolled it to smoke. Read on. Sharing the photos on Twitter for her followers to see, she revealed that she tore out the part asking wives to submit to their husbands, which obviously she seems not pleasant for her. Now look at, look at the post. Read that. So, hold on. Scroll up some so you can see the picture, too. Of it, read that. Trust me to be petty and tear out the part that says wives submit, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you Vashti sisters. Yeah. Word for word, that's you. That's what you do in the spirit right there. You roll up the word of the Lord and you say, I'm going to smoke. You ain't care what it, what it say. I don't care what you say either. I'm not doing it. Hey, Cap, you read that earlier in the Proverbs saying, you know, for their mouth when they speak, they think they're right. Mm -hmm. Everything that you can see on the photo. She think what she's doing. Hey, man, this is right. Now, I'll yeah. tell you, some of you sisters is crazy as hell. Uh, go back to <laughs> it crazy. and look at the, look what she dropped the weed on. Look look at this. This is going to make y'all mad. Scroll down. Look at the book she dropped the weed on right there. Oh. Oh. oh disrespecting Levi out here. Oh. She from Nigeria. All right. You can yeah, you can drop that. Okay. We're good on time. Uh go to Ephesians five and twenty two. We're gonna read it. 
And I, I don't think I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen this brought out. Maybe Bishop brought it out and I ain't, I ain't saw it, but I, I know we haven't done it here in Miami. Read Ephesians 5, read 22 through 24. Strong. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Who? who, who he's the what? The savior of the body. Vashti sisters like to disrespect the man of the Lord that God calls his saviors on earth. Oh, they love to give him a hard time being contentious and argumentative. They love to do that. Read on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In everything. Now, I want to do this. Like I, I said, here, man, we haven't done this. Look up the definition of everything because obviously... Sisters do not understand the meaning of that word when it says everything. Can you read 1A? Hold on. Can you read 1A? Zoom in on it. Zoom in on it. Definition of everything says what, soldier? All that exists. All that exists, you are supposed to be in subjection to your husband. All that exists. Leave it up there for him. All that exists. There should never be any type of attitude out of you towards your husband. No matter how you feel. Feel, even if it's during that time of the month, you better find a damn way to be nice. Because that's when sisters try to get you. You know I don't feel good. God didn't say that unless it be that time of the month, they don't have to be in subjection. Now, we ain't stupid. We, we understand using some wisdom. But if you, damn, if you want it done, God says, all oh, that exists. Read the definition. Read, read, I want you read Miriam's Webster. I read all of it. Read everything on the page right now. No, no, oh, no. Scroll, scroll back down. Right there. Read the whole damn thing. <laughs> Miriam Webster, since 1828. So that's how long the definition of everything been around in America to Miriam Webster. Read. Definition of everything. Uh huh. 1A. All that exists. Can you go back to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24? Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In, in what, brothers? What did the definition say? Sisters, you should write all that exists next to everything right now. If you're not a wicked woman, you would write that there. If you're not uh, a Vashti, you would write that down in your Bible. So every time you read it, all that exists would imprint itself on your mind. Cap, you just throw a monkey wrench at them. Yeah. <laughs> that was a monkey. Now they, every they time can. they see it, they be like, oh, damn, man. It's, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not subjecting all that yep. exists. Hey, hey, Cap, listen. What wives know what they mean to submit in everything. Oh, they know. They already know. The problem is, are there spiritually enough to apply it. Mm -hmm. Because they apply, they submit in everything when they go to work. Oh, yeah. So they, it's not like they don't know how to submit. They just, the, the, the spirit in them says, I'm not submitting to him. That, that's where the, the issue lies. Unbelievable. Yes, I've heard reports of sisters beating up on their husband. Smacking them around. I be like, what the hell is going on? Uh, go jump down to verse. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, go to verse thirty-three. So all of that submission, subjection, encompass this too. Read verse thirty-three. Verse thirty-three. Nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular. So love his wife even as himself. Brothers, love your wife as you love yourself. 
and read and the wife and you wives read see that she reverence her husband respect your husband that's what that all that exists that subjection in everything goes into respecting your husband whom God calls this go to Nehemiah real quick 927 I brought it out last week I want you to understand what God calls your husband it, you might not see him as who he is because you know he you be, you know, breath be smelling in the morning, roll over, you know, he burp, he be passing gas in the house, you know, hair ain't brushed, all of that. He ain't got no frankincense in there all the time. He he he's subject, he got to pay rent living in a little bitty apartment right now. You remember what he did before he came into the truth and you just, you just waiting on him to go back, right? All of that stuff. But I want you to see what God calls him in the scriptures. Nehemiah 9.27. Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 27. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, uh -huh. thou gavest them saviors. Gave them what? Saviors. To do what? Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. That man that you disrespect, God calls him a savior of the nation. The ultimate savior is Christ the king to deliver us from bondage. Uh, the brothers you see in here now, their job is to deliver our people from the spirits that plague them. So they are saviors also in the eyes of the Lord to deliver the people. How crazy you got to be to disrespect a savior of God. One of the few that put his life on the line standing on the street corner. We don't know what people got on them when they walk up on us, especially go to night camp too. Anything can happen. How foolish can you be to disrespect uh, a, a man that God calls a savior of his people? Go to um, 1 Samuel now. 1 Samuel 15 and 23 for the Vashti sisters. Go ahead, read it. Verse Samuel, chapter 15 and verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is like witchcraft in the eyes of God. Read. And stubbornness. And what? Stubbornness. Oh, you women can be stubborn. Oh, you can be stubborn when things don't go your way. When it don't fit your agenda of how you think they should be played out. Oh, you become stubborn. Read it again from the top. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Uh -huh. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So when you find yourself acting like Vashti, not in subjection, you in the midst of sin because you're being stubborn. Go to the article. Go to this article. Watch it. Look at this. This is it's so much wickedness on the earth that men are now in this position, thinking this way. Go to it. Young man giving up on marriage. Yeah, you do. You posted everything. While we waiting on that, go to Sirach chapter 26 and 26. Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 26. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. So, so a woman would dishonor her husband because she's got some pride that the white man gave her. Still in her. That don't see you as a savior. That she, you know, she thinks. She still got even or where she thinks she should be equal to you. Because Adam was created Lord of all, not Eve. But she she counseled with a man outside of her marriage that gave her the opportunity to have as much wisdom as Adam. And she jumped on it. Pride, because I just can't I can't be in the background and let you get all the glory no 
No, no, I want to be where you are. That's why a lot of you see in the in the industry that uh uh it's in that book too that women that got some notoriety and fame you don't never see them named after their husband, do you? I wonder why. Go ahead, Cat. I'm glad you mentioned that, Cat, because that pride it comes from Esau's educational system. Because most of these women, remember, uh, in that article we read earlier, for the black men, it was um, blocked for us. They tried to put us in the sports, all right, in that area. But when it came to the educational, most of our sisters are the one who are high up in there, getting their masters, their bachelor's degree, their doctrines. So now with that puffed up pride, and you married up to a man who's just working a simple nine to five, guess what's happening? You dishonor that man. You don't reverence that man no more. Why don't you go back to school? Why? You should be making more money than me. There was one sister in a uh, video who said that, right? It, I won't date a brother um, who can't make more money than me. It's posted, y'all. Yeah. Um, go, go Next precept here. Um, go to Sirach 729 real quick. Read that when you get it. Yeah. Sirach chapter 7 and verse 29. Tell you what God wants you to do. Read that. Fear the Lord with all thy soul uh -huh. and reverence his priests. And do what? Reverence his priests. God's telling you, reverence, respect his priest. No matter where they are uh, in this uh, walk, in this truth, whether they be a brother or a captain of a million, God says to reverence his priest. Now pull up the art article. Um, it's gotten so bad with this feminist mentality, thought process that go through the woman's head, that men are now on this tip. Read that for us. Young men giving up on marriage. What For what reason? Women aren't women anymore. You just ain't women no more. You, you know, you, you tough. You want to throw the blows. Ain't no kindness in your spirit no more. You, you talking like, hey, bruh, what's up, cuz? What up, bro? We about to get it in. We just ain't women no more. Yep. <laughs> Officer Pat GL said that's a homosexual relationship. <laughs> wow, that brother deep. Woo. Uh, <laughs> goodness gracious. Um, go down to the paragraph that says, when I asked them why. Right there. When I ask them why. We're going to read down to man I type. Read that. The answer. Oh, where are you, where are you at? The answer is always the same. Women aren't women anymore. Feminism. Read it again. Feminism. No, from the top. When I ask them why, the answer is always the same. Women aren't women anymore. Feminism, which I, teach. I, hold on. With, with, just with that thought right there, you sisters better. Worship the ground these men walk on, because when they come in here, what they got to do? You got to sign them papers if you're with their sister. You can't be in here amongst us and not marry these women. So you got a man that is, is taking the law of God and applying it and marrying you and making you a wife, and you don't even want reverence and respect him just for that? You could be a baby mama out there. You really could be, uh, 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 what happened to you and Rodney? Oh, we know, you know, things didn't work out. But I'm talking to some other dude that I met online, and he seems all right. <laughs> the Hebrew strength, that's who you'll meet online. Go back to it. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Let's Feminism, which teaches women to think of men as the enemy, has made women angry and defensive though often unknowingly. Now the men have nowhere to go. It is precisely this dynamic, women good, men bad, that has destroyed the relationship between the sexes. Yet somehow men are still to blame when love goes awry. When love goes awry. Read on. Men are tired, Venker wrote. Read it again. Men are tired, Venker wrote. Read. Tired of being told there's something fundamentally wrong with them. 
tired of being told that if women aren't happy, it's men's fault. Sisters, we tired. We tired of your wickedness. We just tired. Men, are, men they tell you know, men are so damn tired. They say, you know what? I, I'm just, I'm a, I'm gonna live the life of Paul. I'm gonna be John the Baptist. Brothers in here been in the truth for three, four, five years, be hearing about the wickedness of, of women. I, I, they'd be like, I'm, I'll wait till I'm 35 to get married. When she's old and about to die, then I'll know she'll be in subjection to me. What that T.K. Kirk that Bishop brought out? When she's about to die, then I'll marry her. Now I know she'll fall in subjection. Just as we tired of the wickedness. And, I, and I'm going to pull something. Ready? Because you might say, oh, she's wicked. You wicked, y'all man are wicked too. I'm gonna show you something in the scriptures. Uh go to Sirach 36, 22. This is what the man want right here. This is how you get yourself married, sister. Quick, too. Sirach 36, 22, 23. Go ahead. Sirach chapter 36 and verse 22. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, and a man loveth nothing better. Read if it again. Read it again from the, top. the beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, uh -huh. and a man loveth nothing better. And a man loves nothing better than a beautiful woman. Read. If there be kindness. If there's kindness. Meekness. If there's meekness. And comfort. If there's comfort. In her tongue. And not arguments. Not complaining. Not nagging. A man loves that. He will go out his way for you. But if you're a dragon, if you're a wicked, if you Vashti, if he makes it to the kingdom, he's going to replace your ass quick. Yeah, you still be number one because y'all was ordained. But you ain't going to get all the time that he wants. He'll give that to the one that's going to be kind, have meekness, and comfort in her tongue. Finish that verse. Then is her is not her husband like other men? He's not like other men because you ain't gonna find women in this world now that that don't have feminism in their mind, that that, that uh, walk around with kindness and meekness and comfort in her tongue. That's why men ain't getting married no more. Women ain't women. They ain't kind no more. They ain't meek no more. They don't know how to speak to men no more. I just play the card. I play the dozens. I take my chances on catching something I can't get rid of. That's how bad it's gotten with women. Um, go to Sirach 26. Let's read 13 through 16. Read it when you get it. Sirach chapter 26, verse 13. Uh -huh. The grace of a wife delighteth. The grace, go ahead. Of a wife delighteth her husband, and her discretion, discretion will fatten his bone. He'll live a little bit longer. Remember, we pulled out earlier, we died a little bit faster than, um, was it, white man already. And we got everybody out here trying to end our life. Fatten our bones, sisters, with a little bit of discretion. Learn when to be quiet. Read. A silent and loving woman. A silent and loving woman, read. Is a gift of the Lord. Uh-huh. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. In the scriptures, read. A shame face, a shame face, and faithful woman. A faithful woman to what? To um, to what did that definition say? A faithful woman in the advancement of her husband's cause. Faithful to that. We all on the same page. Read is a double grace, mm -hmm. and her continent mind cannot be valued. Is that it? On? Read verse sixteen. As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven. So is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. How the husband wants the house to be ran. You know, I was thinking, I think um, I was seeing something. Maybe it was a, a post or something. It said kids don't take naps no more. And I thought to myself, I wonder whose damn fault that is. Kids just up all day. They go to sleep when the parents go to sleep. Husband gone all day. The kids is riled, riled up, rebunctured down, and go sleep when they pass out. I said, dang, I wonder who's fault that is. Especially if the husband does say, make them take a nap here, 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 and they should be in the bed at this time. Sisters, you got to order the house according to how the man wants it. Jeremiah 44, but this is what happens. 
far too often, far too many times in the uh, feminist Eve, McCall, Vashti, sister, Jeremiah 44, 16, 17. Read it. Jeremiah chapter 44 and verse 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. Hold on, read, read it again, verse 16. Verse 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord. Uh, you brought scriptures. We sat down and we went over the Bible. That's in the name of the Lord. Read. We will not hearken unto thee. I don't give a damn what you said. I don't care how you broke it down. Read. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. So a wicked woman, when she hears scriptures of you should have kindness and meekness and comfort in your tongue, your husband loves to your husband loves to discretion and to fatten his bones. A wicked woman in her mind will say, We will do whatever we want. We will do whatever so comes out of our mouth, not yours. Read it again. Verse 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. Out of our own mouth. The Vashti sisters, which in turn you truly are Jezebels. Now, let's go to that. We almost finished. I want to say something to you brothers here. Brothers, nothing makes a man look weaker than uh, when a woman has to defend you because your feelings were hurt. Let me say it again. Brothers, nothing makes you look weaker when a woman has to defend you because your feelings was hurt. First Kings chapter 21. Let's read verse, let's read 1 through 7. I say I say I say the Jezebel for last. McCall Jezebel McCall Vashti, a wicked woman. Read that one through seven. First Kings chapter twenty one and verse one. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard. Because this is the worst. That's why I saved it for last. Read that. Which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth saying. Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Mm -hmm. And the bot said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. He said, the Lord forbid it me. Read. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. His feelings was hurt. Speaking to another man, his feelings was hurt. Read. Because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned did, away. Hold on, his, he did what? Laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. Just imagine, picture that in your mind. He laid on his bed and then he turned around and faced the wall. And he said he would eat no bread. Who do you think brought, tried to bring him some bread to eat? His wife. She saw him turned against the wall, balled up. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Nabal. Nabal, he wouldn't give me uh, his, his, his vineyard. I asked him for it. I said, I even give him money. What's her response? Verse 5. Verse 5. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? I told you. Go ahead. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Nabal the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. Mm -hmm. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreel. Hold on, read that part again. I what? I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreel. That's why I saved Jezebel for last. She's the worst. Jezebel sisters don't give a damn about the laws of God. How, how do we know that, that Jezebel don't care uh, about the laws of God? Jump back over to verse 3. Verse 3. 
And the boss said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it me. Who said that? The Lord forbid it. Naboth is telling me it's in the law. I can't give you my, my inheritance of land. You don't think Jezebel knew the law of land? She's the wife of the king. She understood the law of land pertaining to Israel. But she said out of her own mouth, read that bottom of verse 7 again. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. We will do whatsoever come out of our own mouth. Go ahead. What you, what you read in here, Jezebel, that's the full form, the complete form mm. of Eve and her wickedness. Yep. That right there. I will take this authority and put it on myself. Damn. That's the full form right there. Read verse 7 again. Verse 7. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. And, and look at it. This is what I wrote down. It says, they don't care nothing about the law of the Lord, even when they husband is wrong. Look at all them uh, that, that ran out behind their husbands, following their husbands in wickedness just a little while ago. None of them uh, uh, that left the last year or two years ago, they didn't apply Matthew 18 with none of the leadership. It was brought out that they said, we didn't hear about this. They didn't tell us nothing about it. The law was not applied, and they still ran out right behind them, agreed with their husbands in their wickedness. That's what Jezebel's sisters do. Even if their husband's wrong, they agree with him. And it gets worse. This is what, this is what else Jezebel's sisters would do. Read on verse 8. Verse 8. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Uh, she took a position of authority that was not hers. Read on. And sealed them with his seal. Uh, and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city, uh -huh. dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him. To bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. That, read it, that carry him out to do what? And stone him that he may die. Jezebel's sisters will eventually kill you. They will, they will set you up to kill you. And it might not be physically, they'll spiritually destroy you. Set up a, uh, set up a, a, a series of events to cause you to get blasted by leadership. Start an argument with you, and then reach out to leadership. I need your counsel. Because you're setting things up to get him blasted. Jezebel, sisters. And this is the thing about it, too. Deuteronomy 25, 11, and 12. Ahab is talking to another man named Naboth. Two men. Conversating, discussing. Read Deuteronomy 25 and 11. Deuteronomy. Go ahead. Chapter 25 and verse 11. When men strive together, one with another, and the wife of the one draweth near, for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, mm -hmm. and putteth forth her hand, and taketh him by the secrets. Then thou shalt cut off her hand. What is God telling us in this law? What's the wisdom that we can pull out of this? Sirach, can you answer that for us? Oh, Officer Sirach. Oh, oh, he ain't married. That's right. Bartimaeus. Give it to Bartimaeus. What is God telling us in that law when it comes to man? When two men are having a discussion, women are supposed to stay out of it. Mind your own damn business is what God is saying. Wait a minute. But hold on, hold on. What's the extreme? Back then, what was the punishment for that sister who did that? Verse 12. Come on. Then thou shalt cut off her hand. Woo. Thine eyes shall not pity her. Don't feel sorry for her. Don't feel. That, that right there is, uh, you brothers need to get your wives in order. Mm -hmm. You need to get in order. Let her know, listen, this is not your business. How dare you? Get into men's business. That's how serious God was about it. They chop off her head. She had no business jumping in between man's matters when they, they discuss or something. But Jezebel's don't give a damn about the order of God. They'll circumvent that. They don't care about the laws. What should you be doing? 
1 Timothy 5.15. It's hope for a wicked sister named Jezebel McCall Vashti. 1 Timothy 5 and 14. Just got to do what God tells you to do. This is what God wants you to do. Read that. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Uh huh. For some are already turned aside after Satan. So God wants you to guide the house according to the standards that that man set up. Bear children. Get married. That's what he wants you to do. Because outside of that, you will find your, you find yourself dancing with Satan. When you go outside of the divine order of God for you as a help meet that he calls a woman, you find yourself dancing with Satan. Read verse 15 again. Because if you don't do 14... The 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 um what you call it, the um the consequence or the payment for it is verse fifteen. Read it again. For some are already turned aside. No, verse fourteen. Verse fourteen. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Uh, nobody should be able to say that um black and brown women got anger issues. Black and brown women, all they do is have babies. Black and brown when they disrespect their husbands. They don't love their man. That's giving the uh, enemy, what did it say, the adversary, a chance to speak reproachfully about you. The payment for not doing that, verse 15. Verse 15. For some are already turned aside after Satan. So you ain't following that. You're following Satan. Go to Titus chapter 2. Three through five. Read it. Titus chapter two and verse three. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Be in behavior. Sisters, you got to work on your behavior. First and foremost, with your husband. Read. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober. To love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. If you are not practicing these attributes of a holy woman of God, there's no way you can teach it to someone younger than you. There's no way that your, your daughter will grow up and be that Proverbs 31 woman, even in a halfway resemblance of it. She will grow up and follow in the footsteps that you taught her. Because who is a, a woman's, uh, a young girl's first teacher? It's her mother. It's how much she's going to learn. And I, and I, but in that book, it tells you that she learns your ways. Because you sisters, you, you, you know, you know, we man, we quiet, we silent, we keep our thoughts to ourselves. But you wear you wear your emotions on your sleeves, and a, a a young girl picks up her how to handle herself, her demeanor, just by looking at you. She knows when you're mad. She knows when you're upset. She can tell when your countenance has changed, your mood has changed. She learns those things, picks them up, and then she uses them on man to manip manipulate them, thus making herself. Jezebel McCall Vashti all over again. To the point she come in the truth, she'll be eight years in. Twenty years in if she was born in the truth, but still don't nobody want to marry her. Been proven four five brothers. Let's end it on this. Sirach 25, 13. Let's read that and we're going to jump. See yep. You need to be that because this is the man's thoughts right here. Read it. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 13. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. So this is for those that might have thought, see, you man are wicked too. There ain't no wickedness like the wickedness of a woman. It's torture. It's so bad, it'll kill you early. Kill, it'll kill black and brown men quick. We won't live out the days of our life. 
Read it again. Give me any plague, but the plague of the heart. And any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman. Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon. That's how bad it is when a woman's in the midst of wickedness. Read. Than to keep house with a wicked woman. Read. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. I told you, that's why you can't hide it. That's why, that's why you can't be fake about being that Titus 2 sister. Because the Lord says, you women, the way I made you, you wear it, you wear your emotions on your face. You wear it on your sleeve. Your kids will pick up on this. And then we'll be for for when it's time to counsel your daughter, we'll be reading uh Ezekiel 16 to her. Go to Ezekiel 16. Y'all know I wasn't gonna forget that one. Oh no. Oh no. We're gonna take all the meat off the bone. Ezekiel 16 and 44. Let's read 45 for some icing on the cake, too. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 44. Behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, uh -huh. saying, as is the mother, so is her daughter. You're just like your mama. you just like she used to be. I don't know where you get that attitude. You get that from your mama. I know all women's heard that before. Read on. Thou art thy mother's daughter. You just like your mama, God says. And, and what do they do? That loatheth her husband and her children. You disrespect and hate your husband and you secretly hate the children. Because if you did, you wouldn't act that way because you know it's going to affect those kids. Read on. And thou art the sister of thy sisters, which loathe their husbands. Oh, oh, you ain't anybody yourself. Your sisters are the same way. Go ahead. And their children. Your mother was an Hittite and your father an Amorite. God called you a Hamite. Straight disrespect, you called you a Hamite. Base people. Let's go back. Sirach 25. Let's pick up at verse 19. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 19. Let me, hold on, let me see. No, uh, 17 through 19. 17. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. <laughs> I know some brothers in here she read it again. Here she go again. You know what that, that uh, um, it says among his neighbors? When he's in here with his brothers and he look up and you got a stank face on you. That red to go face. Read 18 again. Verse 18. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors. And when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Uh -huh. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. I told you, there's no wickedness like a woman's wickedness. That's why, that's why you got to change, sisters. You can't be that Jezebel... McCall Vashti sister. Is what they say? What's the what's the saying? Is no scoring like a what, brothers? How is that a saying on earth? And you know they don't use that for, for other nations. Y'all know who that's directed at. It's directed at you. Here, I'll show you a woman scorn. We got time. Pull up the video of the woman that got her face blown off. You know what I'm talking about. If you ain't seen it, sister, here it is. Ain't no scorn like a woman scorn. All wickedness is but little wickedness to a woman. Yeah, play that. Here, here, read the script. Leave that up there. And I want you to read the script again before we play the video. Read 19 again. Verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Play the video. That's a gas can in her hand. <laughs> Cut the video. Read 19 again. Verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. She'll take a damn chance and risk getting her face blown off just to get back at a man. 
finish the verse out. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. What's the portion of a sinner, brothers? We're going to end it on that. Pull up headquarters. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.